Okay, Jeff here with another in our series of key diagram videos. We take a topic and just work through one of the diagrams. You should be able to draw to get good marks for analysis uh, in your exams. Let's spend a few minutes together thinking about derived demand. Now, derived demand is an important concept, particularly if you get a question on interrelationships within markets. So derived demand occurs when there is a demand for a good or a service or a factor of input resulting from demand for an intermediate good or service. So, for example, let's think about the growing demand for electric vehicles. There's uh, increasing production of cars and trucks and e-bikes as well. Well, of course, you need inputs to produce those vehicles, and that increasing demand for and use of e-vehicles has led to a strong increase, a big rise in the global demand for lithium since lithium is used in the batteries. Of course, that in theory then causes the world price for lithium to climb higher. So that's a good example here of a lithium iron battery pack, and it's part of our derived demand example. So oftentimes with a derived demand uh, question, you might use a double diagram. So on the left-hand side, we have the demand, if you like, for the final product, e-vehicles. And on the right hand side, we have the demand and supply of the intermediate input, the price of lithium. So let's work through the diagram. If the demand for e-vehicles goes up, which of course it is, particularly as corporates move towards uh, e-vehicles and, uh, and as, as people's incomes allow them to, to buy these products, demand shifts out to D2. That causes an increase in the equilibrium price of e-vehicles, but also critically, an increase in the quantity supplied, so the level of production will go up. Now that then causes an increase in the derived demand for lithium. So D goes out to D2 for lithium, the intermediate input. I've drawn the supply curve here as, as fairly inelastic, suggesting, of course, there may well be some time delays or some production capacity limits in terms of, of lithium's availability as a scarce resource. And if that's the case, if supply is price inelastic, then an increase in demand will lead to a quite a sharp rise in the world price of lithium. So there's your derived demand example. Interestingly, uh, here's, the, here's a chart which shows that the price, the worldwide cost in US dollars um, per kilowatt hour uh, of lithium ion battery packs. And uh, this is from sort of 2011 through to 2020 with a little forecast for, for next year. And you can see there's been a dramatic fall in the price of battery pack costs. Uh, this is a result largely, I think, of economies of scale in production. Can you think and can you visualise an economy of scale diagram? If you can, you're in great shape. And also, of course, improved manufacturing techniques. We, we, we talk about something called learning by doing or moving down the experience curve as battery manufacturers become more proficient, more technologically advanced in their manufacturing techniques. Now, if this trend continues, the falling cost of batteries will help bring down retail prices for vehicles and therefore make them more affordable. Two or three other examples of derived demand. Clearly, if you get a question on the labour market, the derived demand for labour across many industries. So, for example, there's increasing demand for social care and care homes, increases the demand for labour uh, across many sectors, uh, increasing demand for software engineers, for example, in digital businesses. The demand for warehouse space is a great example of derived demand, particularly as online sales and distribution expands. And if you think about construction, if we're building new bridges, housing, new motorways, etc., and then the demand for inputs such as bricks and cement and glass and steel would be good examples there. So derived demand, quite an important concept at a microeconomic level. And hopefully this short video helped you understand it. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. See you sometime soon.